Hello, I'm Constitutional Attorney Katherine Henry. Welcome to the Restore Freedom Weekly Constitution Segment Recap. We are recapping Season 2, Episode 24 of Restore Freedom Weekly, uh, where we talked about the new appeals court decision on DHHS health orders. This is just a Constitution Segment Recap, so to make sure to hear that full discussion and all the details involved, check out that full episode, the link for which is on page 2 of the slideshow. So this week we talked about that new appeals court ruling on DHHS health orders. Now, take a step back, go back to 2020. Governors across the country issued EOs like they were going out of style, but some of these orders went too far. They mandated jabs, they prohibited gatherings, they literally shut down businesses. Well, several state courts have explained that these orders are unconstitutional, but overall courts have simply not gone far enough in explaining just how many constitutional provisions are violated by these kinds of orders. So in this week's episode, we talked about this brand new Court of Appeals decision out of Michigan, talking about the health department's emergency orders. But that case in turn talked about not only the Michigan Supreme Court 2020 decision in validating the executive orders that did the same thing, but also it quoted heavily from a 2023 U.S. Supreme Court case, which is, of course, equally applicable in every state across the country. Don't forget on Tuesdays between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. to check out our true or false question. Go ahead and participate right over on our community page on our YouTube channel, uh, which is um, Restore Freedom on YouTube. So check it out between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. Now, this week, we didn't go into too much detail, but we reiterated some of the discussion that we had last week about uh, the separation of powers and where that is within the U.S. Constitution and the state constitutions and uh, whether that wording actually appears in the constitutions, reminding us of which parties are able to make laws. Well, the legislative branch. Um, that's uh, applicable in this week's discussion because this case is talking about how the legislature has the right to make laws and not the executive branch through these orders. But last week we talked about it because we also want to remind you, even though we're talking about cases, there's no such thing as case law, there's case precedent, but judicial branches don't get to make law. So anyway, more on that in last week's uh, video, so check those out. There is a timeline of relevant court documents to keep in mind. Uh, it involves two of my very own briefs that I filed with the Michigan Supreme Court on these exact issues. And in fact, one of them specifically talking about the statute that's uh, at issue here in uh, this recent decision from the Michigan Court of Appeals. Um, also, there are two relevant Michigan Supreme Court decisions and orders, and of course, the uh, order itself or the opinion itself from the Michigan Court of Appeals from just last month. If you want to be able to access any of those older decisions or uh, my own brief, any of those documents directly themselves, you can click uh, the click here button in the slideshow and it'll take you to that part of my website where you'll be able to access any of those through those hyperlinks, except for the newest decision that we're talking about today. That link will be shared with you tomorrow in our Freedom Fighting Tools. So the facts of this case, we talked about again in much more detail, but essentially what it boils down to is that the plaintiff and appellant in this case owns a restaurant and they would often have no less than 25 people, but sometimes even more than 100 people and they would frequently be open after 11 p.m. Well, these EOs, emergency orders, uh, through the public health uh, code were basically trying to shut all that down and saying they were only allowed to have a fraction of those people in their uh, restaurant at any given time and uh, at their venue, they were not allowed to be open past 11 p.m., which severely curtailed their business and the, the finances that were uh, they were dependent on to keep the business going. And they were actually forced to shut the doors on a main aspect of their business because of this. So uh, what the court points out is that the original orders issued in Michigan were done under those two statutes in Michigan that deal with governors directly issuing e um, uh, executive orders, and that those two statutes, or at least the way that they were used, were deemed to be illegal or unconstitutional, uh, specifically because the governor doesn't have, uh, can't exercise that legislative authority to control all the aspects of our lives in that way. In fact, the Court of Appeals points out here, the executive orders that were used in 2020 by the governor regulated many of the daily activities of Michigan residents and affected their ability to operate their businesses. Now, this Court of Appeals decision points out that even though the court, the Michigan Supreme Supreme Court said, no, these are unconstitutional in October of 2020, the governor immediately turned and started using the public health code to have her subordinate, the director of the Department of Health and Human Services, to issue orders that do the exact same things. Now, is this a surprise? Well, maybe to some people, but uh, as you'll see in some of these slides, um, any of these 
uh, any of these uh, where it's a, a white, uh, you know, copy and paste section that came right out of a brief. Those are from my brief that I filed on October 9th with the Michigan Supreme Court saying, hey, the governor has said she's going to going to go ahead and use the public health code 333.2253. Let's stop her from doing that now because it was unconstitutional under this under other statute. It's just as unconstitutional with this newer statute for her to use. Stop her now. Did they choose to do that? No. I mean, they didn't grant her motion to extend her time with her executive orders, but they totally ignored her use um, of the emergency orders. So uh, you can read a lot about the background. All these parts, like I said, are pieces that I warned the court about and pleaded them with them to handle way back in 2020. Um, so with that being said, uh, many of the aspects that I focused on and brought out in my brief interestingly enough, are the same things that the Court of Appeals focuses on in this recent uh, decision. <clears throat> so one of the, at one time, I, I mentioned that considering the director's orders state they are punishable by a misdemeanor six-month term of imprisonment and or a fine of $200 and a civil fine of up to $1,000 per day, as well as uh, the, the you know, licensing sanctions, um, we need to remember the fundamental rights that are being protected here by our constitution. I said, among other things, the director's orders severely limit our right to peaceably assemble, operate our businesses at normal capacity, and um, to require us to wear masks, uh, let alone to do the contact tracing and everything else that they were doing. So uh, th these are the very things that the Court of Appeals brings up in this case. Now, the color of each slideshow has meaning, and we talk about that in the full videos. Uh, the red portions here are things that I pulled right out, they're word for word, out of the, this um, particular court opinion, and they're good and bad for a variety of reasons. Again, check out that full episode to hear why uh, I've included these slides in here, um, any of them that I don't talk about in uh, specifics today. It's important to note that there is no acceptable delegation of legislative power. Our Supreme Courts have recognized that across the country, the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, the Court of Appeals here, yet they still talk about and analyze all the reasons of how and where and when and why it's okay for the legislature to delegate legislative authority to other branches of government. Um, so it's, it's baffling to me, but they do acknowledge there is no acceptable delegation of legislative power. And why? Well, that's because our legislature can only make laws. They can't make legislators. That's not their authority. It's also important to look at the discussion that the Court of Appeals had about epidemic, which is one of the main words central to this particular statute in the public health code and these uh, epidemic orders. Well, epidemic isn't even defined by law, but if you look at a number of different governmental organizations, uh, the CDC, the U.S. Surgeon General, et cetera, you'll see that, well, uh, there's an epidemic in our nation for obesity and opioid overdose. The World Health Organization talks about the tobacco ep epidemic. Um, US, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services talks about illiteracy being the silent ep epidemic. And the U.S. Surgeon General talks about loneliness being the greatest threat to public health. Uh, so the court does this great job of talking about some of these examples of what these orders could potentially allow the director of the Department of Health and Human Services to do. And that would include issuing orders that... Um, they say, similarly, if obesity and loneliness were rampant in Indiana or anywhere else, arguably the director likewise could determine that control of an epidemic is necessary to protect the public health and exercise the powers under this order by imposing restrictions on Michigan residents. Uh, the, the orders would then allow uh, or order Michigan residents to socialize with one another to combat the epidemic of loneliness or to exercise vigorously to combat the obesity ep epidemic. And, it, and they say the irony is not lost here that with the COVID-19 orders, those orders actually required just the opposite. They restricted people from gathering and from using communal exercise facilities. So, you know, these orders, the ridiculousness and the grand, grand proportions that these orders can be used for, according just to the letter of the statute itself, uh, is immense and uh, totally unreasonable, let alone unconstitutional. There's a lot more great stuff uh, in these slides and, of course, in the full episode that we talked about, so check it all out. Make sure to check out yesterday's Way to Get Involved Challenge, tomorrow's Freedom Fighting Tools, and, of course, join us again next Tuesday at noon for our next full episode of Restore Freedom Weekly.
Make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and share. Restore freedom.